You hear about it all the time on the news. People getting their credit card information stolen because someone hacked into an online retailer, or there was some sort of security breach that exposed people's personal information. Yeah, and just like identity theft is a big deal to you and your family, stolen or compromised data can be a huge problem in the industrial world with severe and even life-threatening consequences. But luckily, there are things we can do to protect ourselves and the industrial world by securing our networks. That's right. Stay tuned and we'll explore the basics of industrial cybersecurity. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Karen. So, as we all know, viruses are a big topic these days. But unfortunately, COVID isn't the only virus we need to worry about, especially in the industrial world. Yeah, sadly, it's true. Computer viruses and other malware are no longer just an IT problem. They've made their way onto the factory floor and in industrial control systems all over the world. If you remember hearing the term Stuxnet, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, wasn't that that malicious worm that almost took out a nuclear power plant in Iran? Wow, wow. Yeah. very impressive. You are uh, very historic and Thank worldly you. there, Ms. Day. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, but you're right. Stuxnet is just one example of how dangerous these viruses and malware can really be. Now look, obviously, if you lose control to a power plant, bad things happen, really bad things. like. Walking Dead bad. <laughs> Clearly. But to make matters even worse, it's not just viruses that we need to worry about. Any security threat, whether it's intentional or accidental, can cause massive problems in a control network. These problems range from nuisances like lost data to costly downtime, safety hazards, or even a complete loss of control. Yeah. And for that reason, cybersecurity is a huge topic especially for control networks, because they are the communication backbone of so many critical processes. Utilities, oil and gas, water treatment, and of course, industrial manufacturing all rely on networking to make everything run smoothly. Right, but it's not all doom and gloom. The great news is the right security measures can only enhance safety and reliability within control systems. And there are lots of things users can do to protect control networks. So let's get to it. Obviously. So the very first layer of security that can be implemented is physical security. Just like you lock your door at your house or even install a security system, you can secure the physical space where your controls are. For example, a lot of facilities have isolated control rooms where their servers are kept. And these rooms are usually locked down by their IT department. This has always been first layer defense. Right, and while physical security is important, in the industrial world, it's just not practical to lock down the entire factory floor. Technicians and production workers often need access to machines to keep things running. Plus, even if you could physically lock everything down, it's just not enough protection. As the IT and the industrial world have become more and more interconnected, the need for better security, or cybersecurity, has increased as well. Right. You need something within networks to protect networks. What you need is a firewall. And guess what? I came prepared. What? Check this out. Well, I knew they weren't going to let me do it in the studio, so I took the liberty <laughs> of going outside and playing with some stuff. So check this out. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, that's kind of cool, actually. But Thanks. actually, no, it's hot. But still, that's not the kind of firewall we're talking about here. A network firewall, in its simplest terms, is a hardware appliance or piece of software that's designed to prevent unauthorized access to or from a network. Now, firewalls can come in various forms, purely software or hardware or a combination of both. Here are a few examples of some hardware devices that work with software to act as firewalls, among other things. And I'm not going to lie, I, I still like my example better. Anyway, as I said, there are different types of firewalls, but their common purpose, again, is to provide security by filtering incoming and outgoing traffic based on a set of user-defined rules. 
yeah, right. In other words, a firewall lets you set rules or parameters about who or what has access to your network. Typically, users will make a rule that only certain IP addresses can access the network. This gets really important, especially when dealing with technicians remoting in to troubleshoot an application. You want to make sure your technician has access, but no one else does. Yeah, that's a great point, Jeremy. Remote access is definitely something you should want to consider when you're securing your network. But we'll get back to that in a minute. First, let's talk a little bit more about how firewalls work. Like we said before, firewalls filter traffic based on a set of rules defined by the user. What that actually means is the firewall will inspect all the incoming and outgoing data packets between networks. Then it will determine if those packets can continue to go to their destination or not, based on the set of rules that were set. It will look at things like the IP address, the destination port, and the state of the packet, or where it's been before. And it does all of this super fast, so that you can't even tell the packet got inspected along the way. Yeah. And that last part where Karen talked about the state of the packet, now listen, that's important because it relates to a term you'll often hear, stateful inspection firewall. So now you know if you see that term on a firewall device, it simply means that device inspects the sequences of the packets and the acknowledgements coming back, as well as the destination info. Exactly. Another term you're likely to hear is next generation firewall. These are the latest and greatest products designed to stop modern security threats as well as application layer attacks. They use techniques like deep packet inspection, application inspection, and SSL or SSH inspection, which obviously are way too complex for us to cover today. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> the takeaway is though, that if you have a critical application, as is the case with many industrial processes, you wanna be sure to have the most advanced protection. So, deep packet inspection, application inspection, next generation firewall, these are some of the key features to look for. Cool, very, very cool actually. So now, let's start talking about remote connectivity because that adds a whole other layer of complexity. And obviously, a lot of us found that out recently. <laughs> Sometimes it's just not possible to be physically present to connect to a panel. Hey, Arona. Yeah, with the increase in telecommuting and remote work, secure remote connectivity is more important than ever. Sometimes it's just not practical to travel somewhere and hook up to a machine. So technicians need a way to connect remotely for troubleshooting or frankly, just everyday operational aspects. But that connection can be a problem from a security perspective. We hear all the time from our customers that they would love to be able to remote in, but their IT department just will not allow it. This is because leaving a network port open for people to connect to is just inviting trouble. Hackers, disgruntled employees, or just anyone that wants to be disruptive could access that port and wreak havoc on the network. And it's not just the open port that can cause issues. The actual data transfer can be risky too. That's because data that's being sent remotely can be intercepted during transmission. So there's a double cybersecurity threat. Yeah, thankfully, there is a solution. VPN tunnel capability can be used. Now, we could have an entire episode about VPNs, and frankly, we probably will at some point. <laughs> but for today, just know that VPNs have three big security attributes. Number one, authentication. This means I am who I say I am, and this password and certificate proves it. Number two, <laughs> encryption. If you intercept the data, you still can't read it. And number three, hashing. If someone manipulates data, you will know it was tampered with and resent. Right, and that VPN tunnel we've talked about is the encrypted connection, or link, that allows for secure remote communication. So, like Jeremy just said, even if someone intercepts the data, they won't be able to decipher it. Where we're going with all of this is that if you have an application where technicians need to remote in, you will need to use a firewall device with routing functions and VPN capability. That device will act as a router on the network and will require configuration in order to allow for that secure remote access. Right, on the other hand, if you just have a flat machine to machine network where no technicians are remoting in, then you don't need any routing. 
In this case, you can use a transparent firewall, or one that operates in stealth mode. It basically sits within the network, undetected, but still provides protection against anyone getting in or out, without much configuration required, which is a bonus there. Again, it's great for flat networks where everyone is on the same sub-network. Exactly. So depending on your application, you can use a routed firewall or a stealthy one, or you can have the best of both worlds like this device from Phoenix Contact. You're really doing that? <laughs> wow. Our MGuard product line is able to be used as a layer three router with VPN capability. All right, can we not do cheesy <laughs> sales guy talk? <laughs> yeah, I agree with all our right, producer. All right, all right, all Come right. On. I'm sorry, I'll spare you guys. Our MGuard product line is able to be used as a layer three router with VPN capability, or it can be used in stealth mode. And it will actually allow you to create up to 250 VPN tunnels from this one device. So what that means is 250 different technicians from around the world could remote in, or it could talk to 250 other machines sharing process data information. Wow. So if you're a machine builder that ships machines around the world and you have to troubleshoot a machine that's down, you could have lots of technicians remote in to help out, all by using this one simple device. Exactly. And it's great for future proofing, especially with more and more people working from home now and all the travel restrictions we're facing. You might not know how many VPN tunnels you'll need down the road, but MGuard has you covered. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Very, very impressive. And in all honesty, sorry for the product plug. We typically try to omit that from these classroom series, but in all seriousness, the MGuard is a fantastic product with a lot of our customer base loving it for so many different reasons, including some of the other things to consider when securing your industrial network. Right, so let's quickly take a look at some of those other things. As with any industrial application, there can be harsh environmental factors that you need to deal with. Whatever product you choose needs to stand up to temperature extremes, vibration, and humidity that's often present in these industrial processes. Office-grade equipment will not last. You need something that's designed for industrial use. Yeah, absolutely. Now, another thing to make sure you have is a user-friendly interface, especially for creating secure remote network access. Not only will you need to do the initial configuration, but you'll need to change the rules as time goes on. For example, you may need to add or remove access for technicians as they join and leave the company. So it's important that your device makes it easy to make these changes and deploy new firewall rules. Some companies even offer free services to help get you up and running. So that might be something you really want to consider when making your selection. You know, once again, I think Phoenix Contact might actually offer those kinds of services, Jeremy, and even more. Yeah, unfortunately, I got to admit, <laughs> you're kind of right there. You know, I usually am. All right, well, last but not least, one more thing to consider. In the event that something does happen to your network, you'll want to make sure that your firewall system allows for event logging and notifications so that you can address threats quickly. This is a pretty standard feature but again, there can be different levels of detail provided by different devices, so it's important to look into. Ensuring IT compatibility will also help with logging, as well as many other potential issues. Okay, so <laughs> we've covered a lot today. Yes, we have. <laughs> and to be frank, I know I've learned a bunch of different things. So let's quickly sum all of this up. How about it? All right, first things first. The need for cybersecurity on the factory floor and within industrial applications is critically important. And firewalls are your best line of defense against malware and hackers. Yeah. Now second, there are many different types of firewalls. But for most industrial networks that tend to run critical processes, you want an advanced level of protection. Next generation firewalls are your friend. Third, firewalls filter traffic and protect access to a network but VPN capability is needed for secure remote communication. That's because VPNs actually encrypt the data in a remote transmission. For most industrial applications, layer three routers with a built-in firewall and VPN capability are the way to go. All right, and fourth, environmental conditions, a user-friendly interface, and event logging and notification are all important factors to keep in mind. And finally, 
MGuard from Phoenix Contact is a really cool product. And Jeremy likes to play with fire. Yeah, it's not so bad. So listen, head on over to that like button, subscribe, light us up so you don't miss all the videos as they're released. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.